you're probably all familiar with these lamps and I've taken a few apart in the past and they had different circuitry so this isn't a repeat video as such because the circuitry in this one I've checked is different again so it's well worth investigating. So this is the classic rotating LED disco lamp and they normally, well it says it's a 3 watt lamp but it's actually uh, showing 1.9 watts here on the meter on the anti 24 milliamps 0.3 power factor which is not unusual for the type of power supplies they use in these. Uh, the idea is you've got three LEDs behind here, red, green and blue, and they shine through this rotating dome. The dome in this one is very diffused. It's, uh, you know, it, it seems like they've maybe cheaped out a bit too much in the dome. Let's unplug it. Because uh, a clearer dome would have produced sharper images, but that's okay. I shall get the hand tie out of the way. And we shall open this. We'll get straight into it. So the dome comes off, as they often do, with a single screw in the end, which is on a shaft that is connected to a little DC motor underneath. Now you can already see there's components on this circuit board. Let me zoom down a bit. Uh, because it looks, to all intents and purposes, as if the whole power supply is integrated onto the circuit board alongside the LEDs, which is interesting. They normally have a separate power supply, either the capacitive dropper in that very odd one I got, super low power, just because a capacitive dropper is really not suited to the sort of uh, high current LEDs. But the other ones usually contain one of the little LED drivers. I'm just seeing if I've got one handy. I do not have one handy. But the ones you'd normally find in the base of GU10 lamps. Yeah, so we've got a couple of capacitors on this side. It's not an aluminium core PCB. We've got an inductor, we've got the... And I was going to say transistor, it's probably a dedicated integrated circuit for a buck regulator. And as usual, we get the motor tapped across uh, this LED here. Sometimes when you rotate the motor, it makes the LED light up. It does, it's a green LED. And uh, turning it the other way usually makes the others light up if you do it fast enough at the risk of breaking all the gears in the gearbox. Radio, well, you know what we do now. Let's take a picture of it and then reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So this is based on a KW10L chip. I could not find a data sheet, but I found a similar chip. But ultimately, then I could work out its function and then the circuitry that was around it to draw the schematic. But to start with, we have live and neutral coming on. The neutral is the whole negative reference for the whole circuit. It's almost like the zero volts. The live comes on via this improvised fuse, a one amp diode. It's got a death beam capacitor, 6.8 megfarad. And then it goes to the little buck regulator chip. And they've really cut that down. It's three pins. It's kind of ridiculous how they manage that. And it uses an inductor, a one millihenry inductor, to drop the voltage because it monitors the voltage uh, to this capacitor here, 220 microfarad, 25 volts. Now, this is a 5 volt regulator, but they've stuck a Zener diode in here, 5.1 volt, just to nudge it up to 10 volts. And uh, that 10 volts is then applied across the LEDs via this 15 ohm resistor, which is upside down. I wonder why they've, it looks hand soldered, like they've added that in afterwards. And you've got the three LEDs in series you've got the red, the blue, and the green. And because there's three volts across uh, the blue and the the green, the blue, and the two volts across the red, that uh, gives about, say, eight volts to drop. So it's dropping two volts across this resistor, which equates to about 135 milliamps through the LEDs. The uh, motor is just tapped across the green LED. They probably, the reason they've probably done that is because the green is the brightest of them all, so it's not going to matter too much that a little bit of the current is being cheated away. 25 milliamps through the motor. The bulk of the components are in the front of the circuit board, the back has the two capacitors, the little switching regulator, and the one millihenry inductor. There's also, worthy of note, the dotted line here. You can see the outline here as well. That's a heat sink of sorts. It's not really going to dissipate a lot from these LEDs because they're being run at less than half the normal current. But uh, this, basically this copper triangle just goes underneath the LEDs just to try and take some of the heat away from them. Let's bring in the schematic. I don't think there's anything else worth mentioning on that. No, there isn't. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. 
So there's the supply come in, the improvised fuse, the standard 1 amp diode, the 6.8 microfarad death beam capacitor, and then it goes to this little chip. It's this uh, switching input to that chip. The chip, the one thing they seem to have added, not sure if this is standard, they've added a 1 ohm resistor there. But uh, this chip will basically pulse this inductor, and it's got current sensing built into it. And it pulses the inductor, and when it does so, it charges up this capacitor. Uh, the Field is built up in the inductor, then it turns off, and when it collapses, the capacitor is also charged from the collapsing field via this uh, flywheel diode, which then bypasses from that end of the inductor over to the other end of the capacitor. That then tops the capacitor up to 5 volts plus their Zener drop here. They've added that 5.1 volt Zener in to add on to that uh, existing 5 volts to give roughly 10 volts. Uh, then there's a Basic 4K7 load resistor, I think that's purely so if the LEDs go open circuit, it just provides a slight load for circuit stability. And it's quite clever. The circuit here, as well as monitoring the voltage in that V-plus pin, it also uses that as the supply for the chip. It uses the current switching pin as the uh, ground reference, the zero-volt reference, the internal circuit in the chip, and that feedback as the uh, plus-volt supply. So it's going to see roughly... 5 volts there, which powers the chip. Um, that's also a standard uh, high-speed ES1J. ES1J, they've just used both there. Uh, diode. Um, then it goes to the LEDs. It's got a 15 ohm resistor. That's the one that's upside down. It's got the red, blue, and green. So 2 volts across the red, 3 volts across the blue, and 3 volts across the green. So it adds up to about 8 volts, and then they're dropping 2 volts across the 15 ohm resistor. And there's the motor tapped across the green LED with its 25 milliamps. That is it. It's a very simple circuit. They've really cut this down to the bare minimum. I guess, ultimately, it's a cost-saving exercise. So that is it. Uh, the disco lamp all back together and working uh, that has basically... Oh, I should have mentioned the 1 millihenry inductor. I took it out of circuit, tested it 4.6 ohm. I didn't take this... The only component... I couldn't give you a valve for, I'll guess it's maybe a 100 nanofarad, is this capacitor. But uh, that's it, the super streamlined uh, disco lamp where they've basically removed the little current regulated power supply and they've created a 10 volt supply with a resistor and series of LEDs just to keep the circuitry as simple as possible. It's very minimalist, it's very cheap, but it does work.